Is there not an appointed time to a man upon earth? Are not his days also like the days of a hireling? As a servant earnestly desireth the shadow, and as a hireling looketh for the reward of his work, so am I made to possess months of futility, and wearisome nights are appointed to me. When I lie down, I say, When shall I arise? And the night be gone. And am I full of tossing, to and fro, unto the dawning of the day? My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. Oh, remember that my life is wind. Mine eye shall no more see good. The eye of him that hath seen me shall see no more. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. As the cloud is consumed and vanished away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. Therefore I will not refrain my mouth, I will speak in the anguish of my spirit, I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I a sea, or a whale, that thou settest watch over me? When I say, My bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaint, then thou scarest me with dreams, and terrify me through visions, so that my soul chooses strangling and death rather than my life. I loathe it. I would not live away. Let me alone, for my days are futility. What is a man that thou should grow him, and that thou should set thine imagination upon him, and that thou should visit him every morning? and test him every moment. How long wilt thou not depart from me, nor let me alone, till I swallow my spittle? I have mistaked. What shall I do unto thee, O thou preserver of men? Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee, so that I am a burden to myself? And why dost thou not pardon my transgression, and take away mine iniquity? For now shall I sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning but I shall not be. That's Job chapter 8. Job chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of a whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Speaking about his friends. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut up the sea with the doors when it break forth? as if it had issued out of the womb. When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and thick darkness, a swaddling band for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know his place? that it might take hold of the end of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment. And from the wicked their light is withholden, and the high arm shall be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? Or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Declare if thou knowest at all. Where is the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? That thou should take it to the bound thereof, and that thou should know the path to the house thereof? Knowest thou it because thou wast born, or because the number of thy days is great? Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of hail, which I have reserved again against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? By what way is the light parted, which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? 
who hath divided the water course for the overflowing of waters, or the way for the lightning and thunder? To cause it to rain on the earth where no man is, on the wilderness where there is no man? To satisfy the desolate waste ground, and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth? Hath the rain a father? Or who hath begotten the drops of dew? Out of whose womb came the ice, and the hoary frost to heaven, who hath gendered it? The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Canst thou bind the sweet uh, influence of the Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or canst thou guide Ar Arcturus with his sons? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that abundant of waters may cover thee? Canst thou send lightning that they may go and say unto thee, Here we are? Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts, or who hath given understanding to the imagination? Who can number the clouds in wisdom? Who can stay the bottles of heaven? When the dust groweth into hardness, and the clods cleave fast together, wilt thou hunt the prey of the lion, or fill the appetite of the young lion? When they couch in their dens, and abide in the covert to lie in wait? Who provideth for the raven his food? When his young ones cry unto God, they wander for lack of meat. Knowest thou the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth? Or canst thou mark the hinds to calve? Canst thou number the months that they fulfill? Or knowest the time when they bring forth? They bow themselves, they bring forth their young ones, they cast out their sorrows. Their young ones are in good liking, they grow up with corn, they go forth and return not unto them. Who hath sent out the wild ass free? Or who hath loosed the bands of the wild ass? Whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwelling? He scorneth the multitude of the city, neither regardeth he the crying of the driver. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searcheth after every green thing. Will the unicorn, rhino, be willing to serve thee, or abide thy crib? Canst thou bind the rhino with his band in the furrow, or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Wilt thou trust him because his strength is great, or wilt thou leave thy labor to him? Wilt thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed, or gather it into thy barn? Gavest thou the goodly wings unto peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich, which leave her eggs in the earth, and warmeth them in dust? And forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beasts may break them? She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain, without fear. Because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. What time she lifteth up herself on high, she scorneth the horse and his rider. Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? Canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible. He paweth in the valley, and rejoiceth in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. He mocketh at fear, and is not affright, affrightened. Neither turneth his back from the sword. The quiver rattleth against him, and he glittereth spear and shield. He swalloweth the ground with fierceness and rage, neither believe he that it is the sound of the trumpet. He saith among the trumpets, Ha ha! He smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. Doth the hawk fly by the wisdom, and stretch her wings towards the south? Doth the eagle mount up at thy command, and make her nest on high? She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock, in the strong place. From thence she seeketh the prey, and her eyes behold afar off. Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain are, there is she. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty 
instruct him. He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer ye twice. But I will proceedeth no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind, and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous? Hast thou an arm like God, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold every one that is proud, and abase him. Look on every one that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee, that thine own right hand can save thee. Behold now the behemoth, which I made with thee. He eateth grass as an ox. Lo, now his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. Probably a wildebeest. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make the sword to approach unto him. Surely the mountains bring him forth food where all the beasts of the field play. He lieth under the shady trees in the covert of the reed and fens. The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook compass him about. Behold, he drinketh up a river and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. He taketh it with his eyes. His nose pierceth through the snares. Canst thou draw out the leviathan, probably a crocodile, with a hook, or his tongue with a cord, which thou lettest down? Canst thou put a hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through with a horn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? Wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him, remember the battle, do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in futility. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportions. Who can discover the face of his garment? Or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible roundabout. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be asundered. By his niecing, a light doth shine, and his eyes are like eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goes smoke, and out of the seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindled coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid by reason of breakings. They purify themselves. 
the sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold, the spear, the dart, nor the habergeon. He esteemeth iron as straw, and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a, pi a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be a hoary. Upon the earth there is not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so, that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz and Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee, and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that ye have not spoken of me the things which is right, like my servant Job. So Eliphaz and Temanite and Bildad and Shuite and Zophar and Namathite went and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters, all that they had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters, and he called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kezia, and the name of the third Karen Hapuk. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job a hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being an old and full of days.